a it's a Latin phrase that w when you look at it, it, it translates to "let the buyer beware," and it's a, sort of a it's sort of a sequel to the one we I, I did last time, which was "big decisions ahead for for Hugo." Uh, in terms of uh, there, I talked more generally about some of the trades that may or may not transpire, but I wanted to look specifically at at Monaghan here and. Uh, because I know we've discussed it a number of times, uh, both in the chat and, and while you were doing your play-by-play -play coach. And, you know, from where I stand, like, it's no secret that the that, that the Habs are really, they're going to try to trade Sean Monaghan before the season end or uh, at the trade deadline time. I think that that, we kind of got that message also the other day when Hughes gave uh, his press conference. Um he implied that when he resigned, uh, re-signed Monaghan to his contract this year it was for one year. That it it was with that intention and promised that he would do his best to try to send uh, him to a contending team by the end of the year. Now that's I think that's only a small part of what could have been discussed, and it's the only part that they're leaking out right now. Uh, there are options I think that will happen or could happen. And from Monaghan's perspective, I think he's done you know he's done his best so far to try to make a uh, huge job a little bit easier. Like he's right now, I believe he's fifth in team scoring, fourth or fifth. Yeah, so I, I was saying right now, I, I don't know where it got cut off, but uh, you know he's fifth uh, um, in scoring for Montreal. He's got thirty-one points, uh, he, and more importantly, he's played all forty-six of the game uh, games so far for Montreal. I think that that's the biggest, the biggest sort of eye opener for me. I think to keep Monaghan and not get any assets in return because we feel like and 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 there's cases to be made for for him to stay. I I don't doubt that and I I really really like Monaghan. So I'm not advocating necessarily that uh, I don't want him on the team. I think that there's a lot of advantages to keeping him if the if you know he takes a hometown discount and and really wants to stay in Montreal. I don't doubt that, but I think it doesn't quite fit into the plans that uh, both Hughes and Gorton uh, sort of set up here. And it would be, I would consider it a failure if they did not trade him at the trade de deadline time. I'm, I'm positive that with what he's shown so far, and he's shown that He's he's been able to stay healthy. That you you are able to get at the very least the first for him. So you'll have to look at the kind of teams that are in the equation. When you look at how they stack up on on center, uh, you, you still you still have Suzuki and Doc that are going to probably fill in top six on your line uh, on your team, and you still have Dvorak for another year, and you have Evans. Uh, that will fill the bottom uh, six on your team. So yes, of course they'll miss Monaghan. There's no doubt about it. But this year is not a year where you're thinking we're making the playoffs or we're getting close to it. And if we don't have Monaghan, that's going to be a huge knock. If anything, it helps you in terms of in terms of uh, your positioning uh, for for the uh, uh, draft itself and entering the the uh, uh, the lottery itself. So. Uh, it again I, I i think it's it's something that um will makes good business sense it's about managing your assets and there's nothing to say that down the road they can't revisit this i mean he is a free agent at the end of the year and i know traditionally free agents that have been traded don't usually come back to the team but if if there is that kind of understanding then maybe something can be arranged at the end of the year but in the interim time what it does is it gives it gives Monaghan an opportunity to play with a contender, at least until the end of the year. Uh, it's not going to be an exorbitant price that they're going to pay another team that's contending. And a team that gets desperate will definitely look at, you know, uh, enriching their center position. Like he'd make a great number two center right now with some of the contenders. Like I'm thinking, you know, possibly Colorado. Um, you can make a case even for uh, Carolina. I mean, even Toronto would love to have him, I think. He'd be a good fit with Boston as well. They've been looking for uh, a, a centerman as well. And the list can go on because I, I think he's going to attract a lot of attention. And you also have to think down the road, right? I mentioned the defender, sorry, the centerman that will fill in the gaps right now in his absence. But you still have, think about it, you still have Beck, you still have Massar, you have Kidney that are about two 
I'd say about a couple of years away, maybe we'll back a little bit less. He might be, he might be here next year or the year after at, the, at worst case scenario. And so you can still fill that part in and acquire some assets in the process. But it's about, for me, it's all about asset management. And um, for me, I, I think Monaghan is better served for Montreal to be traded at the trade deadline time. And I know I'm going to I'm going to hear a lot of a lot of arguments against it. And I totally understand because his leadership is, is invaluable. Uh, what he does to help the younger kids coming along is is something that you definitely need. I don't I don't doubt that one second, but you have to look at the overall game plan. And sometimes it hurts to make a decision like this, but it's something that serves the better good down the road thank you to watching another habs nation video but before we leave we invite you don't forget to click on the like subscribe to the channel and finally let us a comment about this video and remember you have greatness inside of you and we wishes you an amazing great and blessing day